Today's video is going to be all about tea fragrances and I have something for everyone. Whether it be oolong tea, matcha tea or mate, I have you covered. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be centered around a note of tea. And tea fragrances is definitely one of my favorite categories. I didn't realize how many tea fragrances that I actually had in my collection. And I rounded up some of my favorites but I also wanted to keep this list quite versatile. So they're different types of tea fragrances. So without further ado, let's get started on the first fragrance. The first fragrance is from BDK and this one is Gris Chanel Extra. Now I have the original Gris Chanel too and I recently added the Extra to my collection. And quite frankly, you can't go wrong with either of them. They're very similar with some subtle differences, but both of them feature a note of black tea. Now, if you've ever smelt Gris Chanel, you will know it's a mixture of cardamom, tea, fig, and sandalwood. And some people find the sandalwood to be more dominant, some people find the fig to be more dominant, and some people get more of like a cardamom tea. I kind of get a mixture of the notes to be quite honest and with the extra there's just an extra dose of vanilla so it's a little bit more vanillic and just a little bit more woody think of it like day and night this would be the night version however you can wear these absolutely any time of day any time of year but this is such a great tea fragrance because it's not too in your face tea it's definitely more of a complex tea fragrance and the tea isn't in my opinion front stage and center but it's definitely there and i almost think it's gris chanel as a kind of cold weather fragrance i don't know why you can definitely wear it in the summer but that's just kind of how i perceive the smell to be it's quite cozy and i often reach for the original when it's rainy outside. Now I will probably do the same with the extra, but it's such a beautiful cardamom tea. There's a little bit of iris, there's some creamy fig, and then lots and lots of sandalwood. It's an absolutely beautiful tea-based fragrance, completely unisex, and I would highly recommend checking this one out. I do have a 20% off discount code for So Avant Garde if you wanted to save 20% on anything BDK, but you can also use that discount code for the whole website. And 20% is quite a lot off niche perfumery, so knock yourself out with that one. Next up, I want to recommend Winter Palace by Memo. And this one I would say is a little bit more of a fresh and uplifting tea scent. Now the tea, in my opinion, is quite dominant in Winter Palace, but there's also lots of citruses in the opening. You've got two different types of tea in here. You have red tea and you have mate. Sorry, I pronounced that really strange, mate. And yeah, I absolutely get lots of tea from this one. But the opening is very citrusy. There's lemon, there's grapefruit, there's bergamot and there's even orange. You've got lots of vanilla in this one too, but it's not super sweet and gourmand. You also have vanilla in here. There's a little bit of amber and benzoin. It has tonka bean and there is some musk in the base, but how I mostly perceive Winter Palace to be is a very kind of fresh, light and citrusy tea dominant fragrance. I don't get much of the amber, not to my nose anyway. I get a little bit of sweetness, so the vanilla and the tonka bean, and a tad bit of musk in the dry down. But yeah, Winter Palace is definitely more of an uplifting tea fragrance, so it's more of a light and easy, everyday type of fragrance. Next up, we have Tio Cabanel's Je ne sais quoi, and this is hands down one of the most unique fragrances within my collection. I don't have anything that smells remotely similar to this, and that is why I love it so much. It's a really, really comforting and relaxing scent. 
Now this one has two different types of tea in here. It's got matcha tea and mate. But where it gets really interesting is the rice note. And to me, it smells like fresh rice that hasn't been cooked, but you've washed it and it's that smell of the rice water. Please let me know if you know what I mean. It also smells a little bit like rice pudding, but this isn't dessert-like in my opinion. It's almost actually quite savory, but it is very delicious. There's some violet leaf in here that kind of gives it a musky powderiness. And then you've got sandalwood and guyac in the base. Now it is really hard to describe this fragrance. Yeah, that rice note is giving this such a unique edge. It's a little bit creamy, but not too much. So it could smell a little bit like an unsweetened rice pudding with some creamy tea but it's not a dry tea. And I'm getting that violet and I'm getting a little bit of woodiness, but not a lot at all. And if you've never sampled Je ne sais quoi by Theo Cabanel, I would highly recommend trying to get a sample of this one. If you have smelled it, please do let me know your feedback down in the comments. It is a unique DNA, so I'm curious to hear what you think about it, but I absolutely love this one and I would highly recommend it if you like your tea fragrances. Next up, I would like to share with you Dear Polly by Theo Cabanel. And this is definitely one of my favorite tea fragrances within my collection. It's just such an easy reach. It's effortless. It's got a kind of cool vibe to it. And I think this is also quite unique, but at the same time, familiar. Now, this one centers around tea. Again, of course, it's in this list, but the citruses are what are front stage and center in the opening. Now, this is a black tea dominant fragrance, but what I find quite interesting in this composition is the use of green apple. It gives it a sweetness, but also a sharpness, which I feel like is really gorgeous. There's also a sharp and zesty bergamot in the opening, and then you've got black amber in the base. So that's why I say it's a unique composition, but at the same time, it's very familiar and very, very likable. It dries down with a little bit of musk and there is some oak moss in here too. But I mostly get a really uplifting, zesty, green apple, bergamot and black tea. I don't get much of the base notes. Obviously they're there when the apple and the bergamot start to dissipate and then the fragrance dries down and you get kind of like a musky black amber vibe from it. But yeah, I absolutely love Dear Polly. Such an easy reach for me, as I've said, and another great tea fragrance. Next up, we have Killian Princess, or as it's known by its full name, I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess. And this time we're going with more of a sweet, fluffy, marshmallowy tea fragrance. Very different from some of the other ones, but it still has a tea note in here. And I have to say, I absolutely love Princess. If you watch my videos, you probably know that already. It's a pillowy, marshmallow, vanillic scent. There's a little bit of peach in here. There's some tea. The tea note in here is actually green tea. And I just love what the green tea and the ginger adds to this composition. It stops it from being overly sweet because some of the other notes in here, such as the marshmallow, the vanilla, the peach, could make this an overly sweet composition, but the ginger and the green tea just stops it from being cloying. In my opinion, brilliant fragrance, one of the more affordable options from Killian, and yeah, I highly recommend this one. If you wanna try a tea fragrance, where the tea's not front stage and center, but it's definitely in there. Next up, we have a fragrance from the Mesa Margiela Replica line, and this one is called Matcha Meditation. And I don't think this one is too popular, probably because it's quite a unique DNA, but I am absolutely obsessed with this one. And my sister-in-law's daughter thinks this one smells like Auntie Haley because my sister-in-law actually bought this fragrance after smelling it on me. She wore it at home and her daughter was like, you smell like Auntie Haley. So that is really cute. And I think that's really cool that young children can associate a scent memory with a person. It made me really happy to be honest. But anyway, let's get on to Matcha Meditation. A very unique fragrance quite a different 
DNA and very matcha dominant. It's kind of got a dry, powdery feeling to it, but there is this note of white chocolate that starts to come out on the skin. Now you don't get it from the initial spray. So if you've tested this in a store and you've just tested it on paper, you're highly likely not going to get that white chocolate note. But next time you go into a department store, just spray some of this on your hand and just see if that chocolate note comes through because that is what makes this super delicious to my nose. Now this one has three types of tea. There's green tea, there's mate, and there's matcha tea. There's a little bit of citrus up top. I believe it's from bergamot. And then you've got some beautiful florals like jasmine and orange blossom. I mostly get a sweet matcha and chocolate vibe from it. This smells a little bit like a matcha white hot chocolate to me. And yeah, I just love this one. I'd highly recommend getting your nose on it if you want something that is really, really tea dominant, but has a slight sweetness to it. Next up, we have Florieku I Am Coming Home. And this one is what I would class as a fresh and spicy tea fragrance. Not many notes listed. The prominent notes are ginger, white tea, and cardamom. And when I saw those three notes, I was like, these are three of my favorite notes, so I need to smell this one. And this one did not disappoint me at all. It is quite a linear fragrance in many ways. But yeah, it's so fresh and uplifting. There's definitely some citrus in here. I'm thinking bergamot something very light, fresh, and zesty. And then I'm getting that ginger, and I love a spicy ginger note. It's absolutely divine. I'm getting the cardamom, which again is one of my favorite notes. And then that white tea is a lot softer than when you smell a black tea fragrance, a matcha tea fragrance, or a mate tea. So it's quite a soft tea, very uplifting and energizing once again. I would suggest this is more of an everyday wear. It's quite a light fragrance, very appropriate for the spring and the summer. Not so much an evening, date night, that type of vibe, but this one would definitely cut through high heats like nothing else. Again, would highly recommend trying to get a sample of this one if you've never smelt it and you like the sound of the notes. And I just love Flory Aku bottles. They're really, really unique. This doubles up as a travel atomizer. So you get a 50 mil bottle with your purchase and also a 10 mil travel size. And I just think it's a really cool concept. So yeah, that was I Am Coming Home by Florieku. The next fragrance is from Javoy and this one is called Remember Me. And you have the name written down on the side here. And Javoy do such incredible fragrances. I would highly recommend getting your nose on the brand if you've never sampled them. I have some favorites in my collection. Remember Me is one of them. Fire at Will, Musk Palace. But Remember Me, I would say, is a bit of a fan favorite when it comes to more lactonic tea-based fragrances. Now this one has all of the delicious notes. There's a note of frangipani in here, which is a floral that I love so, so much. And then there's also a note of milk and it definitely gives the tea a very lactonic vibe. There's some cardamom in here. There's a little bit of freshness from the bergamot up top too. There's lemon, there's ginger, there's vanilla, there's woody notes, but that cardamom, that milkiness, the tea, the vanilla really makes for a delicious scent and the ginger. I forgot about the ginger. If you just throw a load of my favorite notes together, this is what it creates. And I don't reach for this one as much as I should. I'm so guilty of that because of the amount of fragrances within my collection. So many of them don't get enough love. Oh yeah, this is definitely a sweet tea, lactonic, very vanillic. It's almost in the same category as Killian's Princess, but this one's a little bit more aromatic and less kind of marshmallowy sweet. Instead, this is more zesty. So obviously you've got that cardamom in here, you've got the ginger. And yeah, it's a fan favorite for a reason. Such a brilliant tea-based scent. I'm sure many of you have already sampled Remember Me, but for those of you that haven't, and you would like to try a lactonic tea scent, Remember Me is probably going to be the one for you. And last, but by no means least, we have Wulong Cha by Nishane. 
and I've spoken about this one quite a lot recently, so I'm not going to stick on it for too long. This time we are featuring an oolong tea, and this one also has fig in there. It's very zesty, getting lots and lots of citruses in the opening. And I have to say, this is an extra. This is a citrus that actually lasts all day. Hallelujah, a citrus that lasts all day. This one has mega, mega performance. And it's why I highly recommend Wulong Cha because this type of scent profile is known for having poor longevity. And that is not the case with Wulong Cha. You've got bergamot and orange in the opening, then the oolong tea in the mid with a little bit of nutmeg too, and then creamy fig and musk in the dry down. I mostly get the citrusy tea effect. The fig does start to come through, but only once the citruses kind of dissipate a little bit and then you're exposed a little bit more to the fig and the musk. But yeah, it's a really brilliant scent. If you want something long lasting, definitely get a sample of Wulong Cha because it probably won't disappoint you. I don't wanna say it won't disappoint you because everyone's taste in fragrances is different and everyone experiences different performance too. But for me, mega longevity. So that was all of the fragrances that I wanted to discuss today. As I mentioned, I do have a lot more tea fragrances within my collection. However, I couldn't fit them all into one video. I wanted to give you a little bit of variety here. We've got different types of compositions and scent profiles. But what I want to know, and it's what I always want to know, is what are your favorite tea-based fragrances? I have some that are so high on my wish list of the tea base, so I'm wondering if any of you will drop those down in the comments, but I would like to hear from you. What are your favorite tea based fragrances? Because I'm always discovering such incredible fragrances through the comment section. Please do keep them coming. Thank you very much. So that was it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.